Hey y'all, this is Bill Hewitt, PowerStrokeHelp.com. I'm here with Tom Brown. Hey Bill. Cert certified lubrication specialist, except he's going to talk about coolant today. Does that make you a certified coolant specialist? I hope not. <laughs> I have more damn headaches about coolant than I've ever had about oil, but we're really? going to talk about it. So oil's easy, huh? Oh, oil is dirt easy. Coolant will drive you nuts. Really? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you know, I get a, I get emails all the time about, you know, should I change over to cat coolant, and I, I say no, and the reason I say no is because the chemistry that's in the Ford Gold coolant is the correct chemistry for the entire system. The metallurgy of the parts and the, the coolants themselves will interact sometimes in a very negative way, and it's a, and it's a delicate balance. It's something that re requires some knowledge that, you know, Tom here is going to tell you about today to fully understand how to keep your truck running as long as possible, because if it's not cooling and it overheats for something dumb that you could have done something about, something silly, uh, that, that would be tragic. So that's what this is all about. You know, Bill, research shows that 50% of diesel engine failures are caused or related to improper uh, cooling system maintenance. 50%. Well, 50%. That's a huge number, you know? Yeah. People think there's all kinds of other problems, but the biggest problem is cooling system neglect. Well, it, it, one of the courses that you take in engineering school is called thermodynamics. And thermodynamics deals with it's, it can get kind of hairy and complicated, uh, especially in systems like this. But the basic idea is, is how does heat move? Like air conditioning. Air conditioning is not cooling the inside. It's removing the heat from the inside of the house. How do you, how do you effectively take this heat that's built up inside this engine? Now, if we had the materials, we could run these engines hotter, but we don't. The thing that limits these engines uh, is to be able to maintain the integrity of the molecules of the uh, aluminum and the steel and the iron and, the, and of course keep the oil so that it doesn't get too hot and lose its uh, ability to lubricate. So uh, it's very, very important that the proper temperatures and that uh, maintain inside the engine and that the heat is removed from the engine. That's what these cooling systems are all about, is to remove the heat from the system. So Tom, I'm going to hand it over to you, brother. All right. So what I want to talk about today is the cooling system that's on all of the 6.7 liter power stroke trucks that came into production in 2011. So an overview of these systems. The first thing I want to tell you about is that these trucks all have a primary and a secondary system. They basically have two cooling systems uh, and for general purposes, two radiators. We'll go into more of that in a little bit. So, but there's some similarities and I want to talk about this real quick. These trucks all came from the factory starting in model year 2011 with Motorcraft Orange coolant. Here is a bottle of the concentrated version of the Ford Orange concentrated antifreeze and coolant. This product is also available in a pre-diluted, which means it comes 50-50 already mixed with distilled water. So this is the product that came from the fa uh, with the truck from the factory. The next thing I want to talk about, and I don't have a bottle of it here with me today, but you can go online, just go to Amazon or anywhere else and, and type in Motocraft VC12. Uh, there's a cooling system revitalizer product. This is part of a critical maintenance step for maintaining these trucks. And then the third piece I want to mention right up front here is the Rotunda test strips that are available from Ford or online. Uh, and the part number for those is 328-2050. So I'm going to cover these maintenance procedures uh, in just a little bit, but I just want to lay that out front. So on the primary system, what you have is a, a, primary, a, a typical ra a radiator cooling system that's got about 30 quarts uh, of coolant in it, plus or minus. Uh, early models had slightly less than that. Later models had slightly more uh, because of a change I'll mention here in a second. And the primary system cools the engine itself the engine oil cooler, so how, this is how we're cooling the engine oil, and it uh, provides coolant for the heater that keeps the inside of the cab of the truck warm. And then on 2015 and later model year trucks, the EGR cooler was brought over to the primary system. Okay, these trucks are, these engines are all equipped with two thermostats. There's a low thermostat and a high thermostat. The low thermostat starts opening at 190 degrees Fahrenheit and it is fully open by 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The high side thermostat starts opening at 198 degrees Fahrenheit and it's completely open by 217 degrees. So what they're doing there is they're stair-stepping that opening to help control uh, the warm-up of the engine. 
That way, that the if they just had a single thermostat that opened up, it would allow it would uh, cause too much liquid to go through the engine when it was starting to warm up, and this helps them stair step up to that operating temperature. Um, over here on the secondary side, uh, we have a 12 quart capacity, plus or minus. So again, the earlier ones were uh, slightly different than that, later ones slightly different as well, but 12 is a, a good average number there. Uh, and the secondary system provides cooling for the fuel cooler, the automatic transmission cooler, the charge air cooler, which would be like what you would think of as an intercooler on the older vehicles. And then for the first generation, and when I say first generation here, I mean from a cooling perspective, uh, the EGR cooler was provided a coolant uh, by the secondary cooling system uh, in the 2011 through 2014. Like the primary system, the secondary system has two thermostats as well. They operate a little bit differently. Uh, but on the low side of the secondary system, it starts opening at 68 degrees Fahrenheit and it's fully open by 86 and the high side thermostat opens at 113 and it's fully open at 131. Now I want to go over what you're supposed to be doing to maintain the cooling system on your 6.7 trucks. Ford uh, breaks these down into two different service schedules. You have a normal schedule and you have a special schedule. The easiest way to describe this is the special schedule is what we will used to refer to as a severe duty schedule. Basically, if you are driving short distances without letting the engine warm up all the way, you're towing heavy loads, you're driving high speeds, you're driving in dirty conditions, uh, you're falling into this special category. Uh, go back and consult your owner's manual and see what those conditions are. But I always tell people, I said, if you have any doubt as to whether you're in special or normal, follow the, the uh, special uh, service schedule. It's going to protect your truck and you a lot better. Uh, but I'll start off over here in the normal schedule. So if you take a truck from brand new, you're supposed to be checking the coolant in the primary and the secondary system every 15,000 miles or 600 engine hours. And by checking it, I mean you're using those rotunda test strips that I mentioned earlier in the video that are available from Ford. You dip it down in the coolant, follow the instructions on there, and then you read the uh, test strip against the little card that comes with it, and it'll tell you what the strength of your coolant is and the freeze and boil protection. Two times during the first uh, service interval, you can add the VC12 uh, cooling system revitalizer. It comes in a quart bottle, uh, and you add up to 48 ounces of that to the primary system like I said, you can do that up to two times uh, based on the uh, results from your test strips. Uh, and then, after the second time, when your coolant gets to the point where it's showing low again, or you reach the 105,000 miles or the 72 months, whichever one of those things hits first, you need to do a complete service of your cooling system. And by that, I mean you drain out all of the coolant that's in the primary and the secondary system, flush the systems using the appropriate uh, Ford Motorcraft uh, engine cleaning systems, uh, and then refill it with the appropriate coolant. After you've done that uh, first 105,000 mile service, realize that that first service might be earlier than 105,000 or 72 months uh, because it's whenever you have added VC12 twice and you would be getting ready to add it for the third time, that's when you need to go ahead and do this first change. So this 105,000 or 72 months is not later than. Um, after you've done that first service, then Ford wants you to do another complete service of the primary and secondary cooling systems every 45,000 miles thereafter. Um, all of the components are starting to get older at that point, uh, and so the coolant is having to work harder uh, and it's exposed to older elements in the system, and so they want you to change it out more frequently. Now let's come back over here to the special uh, schedule, which I said like most of you are probably on this schedule. So again, starting off with a new truck, same as before, we're testing that coolant with the rotunda test strips 
every 15,000 miles or 600 engine hours. Again, same thing here, you're going to add the VC12 up to two times. Uh, and then, unlike over here where you had that first change at not later than 105,000 miles, now we're going to do that first service at 60,000 miles or 2,400 engine hours. That number is really important and I highly recommend that if you have a vehicle that idles a lot, so whether you're an ambulance or you tow trailers and you sleep in your truck and you have the air conditioner going or the heater going in the wintertime, um, you ought to be tracking your engine oil and your engine coolant on engine hours and not miles because your engine is idling so much when the vehicle is not moving. And just like over on the normal schedule, after you do that first service, now Ford wants you to come in and do that subsequent services every 45,000 miles or 1,800 engine hours thereafter. The next thing I want to cover is an actual physical demonstration of this system. And I've got Bill's 2011 truck here that we had worked on earlier uh, with our extreme oil change video. This is a 2011, so first generation, first model year of the 6.7, um, and I'll go over and give you a, a go over this and give you an overview of where all the major systems are. The only thing that you're going to notice, maybe slightly different on this truck, is that Bill has equipped with equipped this truck with the Mishimoto high performance primary and secondary radiators. But everything is in the same location and it works the same way. It's just the Mishimoto products work with a higher level of efficiency. But starting off here at the top, and I'll use this long screwdriver, what you see back here is the uh, primary radiator. So, and it works just like any prim uh, uh, radiator system. Uh, it's got a thermostat that sits up in the motor. Now this is the dual thermostat that I mentioned earlier. So instead of having a single thermostat, there's actually two and these two thermostats work together and they open in a stair-step fashion to better control the flow of coolant uh, in and out of the engine to help the engine warm up uh, more smoothly and uh, without a big drop in temperature when, the, when a single, single thermostat would open. This is just a new thermostat cover uh, that would go on top of the engine and your upper radiator hose uh, would connect to this here as well. Uh, but So you've got the top radiator hose up here, the lower radiator hose is down on the other side, we can't see it here in this video because it's hidden up underneath the truck. Um, and then your, like I said earlier, your heater and your engine oil cooler are all connected to this. And we're going to do another video later where we're going to actually do the services on this truck, uh, servicing the primary and secondary cooling system. And when we do that and get it up in the air, I'll give you a better uh, view of where those components are. Uh, but for all practical purposes, the primary cooling system on this truck is the same as most any other engine that has a radiator on it. What is really unique about the 6.7 trucks is the secondary cooling system. So it is located, so right here where my hand, the left hand is, you've got the power steering uh, fluid cooler and down below it is the air conditioning condenser. But if you'll notice back behind it, right back here, where the screwdriver is pointing, there is what looks to be another smaller radiator right back here. And so that is the radiator for the secondary cooling system. So what happens is, and there's an actually a separate water pump located on the engine, uh, and those two systems, the primary and secondary cooling systems, are completely separate. Uh, coolant from one never touches the coolant in the other. It's just that the engine happens to drive both water pumps. So the, uh, there's a small radiator cap right up here on top uh, and a small degas tank, similar to the large degas tank over on the primary system, but this one is for the secondary system. So fluid starts life here and it gets sucked down into the secondary pump that's mounted up on the front of the engine. It's sitting back here up on the top uh, passenger side of the motor. Uh, it gets sucked into there. And then it gets pushed over here and you'll notice this long tube across the front of the truck here. I've got the grill removed for you to be able to see this better. One of the things I want you to be able to see is right here on the passenger side of the secondary cooling system uh, or the secondary radiator is a thermostat housing. Here's the thermostat that goes in there. This is what is known as the high temperature thermostat works just like any regular thermostat and it sits up in this little housing right here 
just like that. So it's right inside of there. Then this hose right here carries coolant down to the transmission oil cooler that's mounted up underneath the truck. Again, when we get the truck mount up in the air, I'll show that to you. What's really special about this secondary system is this pipe right here. So this crossover pipe right here connects two thermostat housings to each other. So again, like I said, coolant is going to come from the secondary water pump into this unit right here on the passenger side of the truck. And when the uh, thermostat on this side is closed, it's going to push all that fluid across over here and it's going to bring that fluid back through the, the uh, lower side of the, the uh, secondary radiator. Secondary radiator is actually two radiators inside of one unit. There's an upper half and a lower half or portion because it actually the lower portion is about one third of the size. So the bottom third of that secondary radiator uh, is where the fluid comes through first. And then there's fluid going down to the transmission cooler as the thermostats open when they're designed to open. So then, so that coolant's coming across here when the engine is cold and then come over here on this side. If you'll notice, right down here, this would be on the driver's side lower corner of the secondary radiator, there is another thermostat. This is the thermostat, that's what it looks like, goes right in there. Works just like a regular thermostat does. Make sure you can see that. Again, it goes right here in this housing right here. And then there is a hose back here behind that carries fluid up into the charge air cooler, which I'll get to here in a second. So these two thermostats, along with this crossover pipe and this two-part secondary radiator, control uh, at different times. So when the, when the vehicle is first started up, most of the fluid is going to become, for the secondary system, is coming through this pipe, and a small amount of it is going to go through that lower section of the secondary radiator. And then as the secondary system warms up, it's going to uh, open up the upper pour, upper chamber, basically, and it's going to allow that uh, secondary coolant to flow through the entire unit and then back up, and I'll get up here to the charge air cooler now. Okay, so here we are looking across the front of the truck from the driver's front fender. And so right here is the upper radiator hose of the primary system. I'm going to see if I can get zoomed in down here a little bit. Because right here is the charge air cooler that cools the air coming out of the turbo before it goes into the engine. Now this unit right here is cooled by the secondary system. This is a primary system hose right here, so these are not connected. But down in here, it's going to be hard to see, there's a hose that brings fluid from the secondary radiator back up to the charge air cooler and then you can see this one a lot easier there's a hose right here that brings coolant back over to the secondary degas bottle so that completes that route uh, the other thing that's going on on the secondary side and you just can't see it there's too many components underneath the hood here is that the secondary coolant is also going down and cooling the fuel uh, there's a fuel cooler mounted down here on the in, by the engine and so it's uh, providing coolant for that as well and the way the truck is sitting today we just can't see it uh, so that kind of completes that circuit for the uh, charge or the secondary system it's going to bring that coolant back over here into this uh, secondary system degas bottle here's a little bit closer view of the uh, secondary cooling system passenger side thermostat so it's this housing right here, and this line right here is going down to the transmission oil cooler. And this is that crossover pipe I was mentioning earlier that carries most of the secondary fluid uh, until the secondary system warms up. And then I'll move over. I've got the air cleaner uh, lid removed right now just so you can see it a little bit easier. Here's the air intake going into the uh, engine. And down right here if you can see where the screwdriver is pointing uh, there's a belt right here and then this is the secondary cooling system uh, pump which is driven by the engine but again uh, this system is completely separate from the primary system and those coolants never touch each other this pipe right here that kinda looks like a 
air conditioning pipe is actually a coolant pipe for the secondary system and on the 2011 through 2014 models uh, this is your EGR cooler and the secondary system is providing the coolant for it. Uh, on the 15 and newer models this unit is cooled by the primary system. Here's a little bit closer shot of the secondary cooling system driver side thermostat uh, down here on the lower side of the secondary radiator. You can see the tank of the secondary radiator right here. Again, this is a Mishimoto high performance uh, secondary radiator, so it has a shiny appearance to it. Your factory Ford models would be blast, black plastic tanks right here, but uh, the how they operate is the same. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this is the type of thermostat that would go in that little housing right here. So those two thermostats working together along with that big crossover pipe uh, and the two chambers in that secondary system uh, provide all of the cooling for the secondary system. And like the primary system, the engine cooling fan, the big plastic fan that's mounted up to the front of the engine, it's pulling air through the front of the vehicle and air is coming through the vehicle uh, when you're driving down the road. And so that air is doing multiple jobs uh, as it's coming through the front of the truck. So the first thing that air coming through hits is your power steering cooler. The next thing it hits is your air conditioning condenser right here. The third thing it hits is the secondary cooling system uh, radiator right here. And then finally it makes its way back to the primary cooling system radiator back here. So the primary cooling system is really getting, uh, you know, it's, it's in the last position and it's actually doing the most work. So a lot of air has got to come through here at a very high velocity to keep this whole thing cool. I want to thank you for tuning in today to learn more about the 6.7 cooling system. Uh, so today we went over the overall system design and then I took you out to a 2011 vehicle and gave you an overview of the vehicle itself. Uh, in a couple of upcoming videos we'll actually do a coolant service on that same vehicle of the primary and the secondary cooling system. Um, just to recap, my name is Tom Brown. I'm a certified lubrication specialist. My number is 678-787-3028. And you can email me at info at best-synthetic-oils.com. Thanks again for stopping by and look forward to seeing you again real soon on an upcoming video.